And we are live. Welcome to our LinkedIn Live new member discussion. We have a nice group here today. I'm Megan Van Petten, and I'm fortunate enough to host our member, our member live and hear and learn about a few companies that have joined um, recently. These are a relatively um, casual conversation where we lo just love to share and learn about our members and why they're here. Um, so welcome everybody. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having us. You're very welcome. Glad to be here. It's it, it's kind of interesting this show today because Roy is an original gangster from like a founding member, literally. I maybe one of our first sponsors. And then Booth, <laughs> you're I know it's so cool. And then Booth, you're a crossover member where I met you from the last association I represented. <clears throat> And you're now members of both, which is super, super cool because I'm actually here at the Fantasy Sports Conference because um, they just can't get rid of me. I love them. And Jake, you are new to the game, but you're in Gurney where we have our next we have our next Six Flags opening there. So it looks like uh, we're going to have a Gurney chapter coming soon. So right on. Welcome, guys, this is going to be a great show. It's going to be probably about 30 minutes. Feel free to generously share and. Jake, oh look, hello Adam. Um, so Jake, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah, so um, I'm with uh, just a little background about um, my company, uh, SIS. So we're Sports Information Services. Um, we are a UK based company, um, but we provide content um, globally um, to many bookmakers and sports books um, across, across the world. Um, essentially we were, we joined about, I think we joined about a month ago, I think with the, the ETSA. Um, so we were excited about that. Um, we, we, we really thought it was going to be a good, I guess, good step forward in, in, in the U S for us to kind of connect, um, and network with a lot of, uh, esports, um, I guess, esports colleagues and companies, um, on the sports betting side and kind of the crossover between sports betting and esports, um, in the space over here. So that's kind of what we why we joined and we were excited to join and meet just more people in the industry that we can kind of connect with and, and kind of bounce ideas off of and and possible partnerships too if that if, if things happen like that so um i guess i'll go a little bit more into our company so we we do uh 24 7 esports content um we also do 24 7 racing content as well um but we'll focus on esports here because that's kind of <laughs> a, the main <laughs> the main idea is but uh so essentially we created our own in-house esports league, um, which we provide round the clock uh, events uh, that we provide to sports books for people to bet on. So it's a betting focused product. And essentially we, the mission for us is to maximize revenue for sports books by creating that short form betting. So our, our events are very short formed. Um, we, we have an event almost every three to five minutes um, and we essentially pump out 180,000 events annually um, between three three game titles. So we do we we do sports simulations, and then on the traditional side we do CS:GO. So that's kind of where we're at right now in terms of the esports space. And right now we're currently looking to expand and provide that to sportsbook operators in the U.S. Okay. Wow. Interesting. So where yeah. where are you based out of? So we're based, we are, our main offices are in London, um, Milton Keynes, and then Manchester um, out of the UK. And then about a year, almost two years ago, we started a, a US based office, which is in Louisville, Kentucky. So um, our, our small but mighty US team is based out of there. Oh, wow. Louisville's so fun. It's a great, great hidden gem, I like to tell people in, in the US. It really it's, is. It's it a really great is. little city. It's a big little city, I guess you could say. And you live up in Gurney. Uh, uh, I, I live I live in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, I'm, I'm oh. here, I grew up in Gurney, in Gurney, Illinois, over here. So I, I'm actually here. I'm traveling internationally out of Chicago at the end of the week. So I, I came to visit some family first. <laughs> oh, perfect! Is yeah. it still freezing in Chicago? Just out of curiosity. It's chilly today. I will say I'm not definitely didn't pack right the right clothes. So <laughs> I'm, that, that, I'm used to the Kentucky weather now, but I'm doing I'm all right. I'm not sure what's going on in Chicago, but it's cold. And it's also cold here in Ohio today. Mm -hmm. So, well, thank you for sharing that. Um, and welcome. 
Yeah, thank you. We're, like I said, we're excited to be a part of the, the organization now and we look forward to the conference. I think it's going to be fun. Uh, it's going to be great to meet a bunch of people in the space and see what kind of avenues we can connect down in on all aspects of the of the esports industry. So we're excited for it. Awesome. Very cool. Great big welcome to you. And we have an old friend representing prize picks. I must have known Adam, your CEO, at least 10 years. Um, he's not here today, um, but that they you do have representation on the panel and it's such a great company. And you guys have just, it feels like you grew so big overnight. I'd love to learn more about um, what you have going, what you have going on. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. Um, so my name is Adam Booth. I'm the esports director at Prize Picks, which is a daily fantasy sports company based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, as Megan mentioned, our CEO uh, is a longtime uh, FSGA uh, member. And uh, before uh, I even came on, he had aspirations to um, create a fantasy product that included esports. Um, Without necessarily being a huge gamer himself, he just knew that uh, this was something that uh, was going to be big. And, and we're talking 2017-ish uh, uh, when, when he started to look at uh, the first offerings that we could do. So um, our history around esports, uh, I'll focus on that, um, began in 2019 with uh, Smite. Um, and it expanded into offering uh, Counter-Strike and League of Legends in 2020, uh, which is when I came on. Um, and through that year, we found that uh, uh, as traditional sports returned, that there was a, a strong natural curiosity for uh, traditional sports uh, members and users to uh, engage with our esports product um, without actually doing too, too much in the way of marketing it to them or, or, or promoting it. Um, and that was the that laid the foundation of what would become a a rather rapidly growing esports department. <clears throat> prize picks. Um, so when I started, we were, you know, a little under 10 employees uh, three years ago. And uh, now our esports team alone is a, a little over 30. Um, so we've we've seen great uh, 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 interest and uh, love um, on a daily basis from our, our user base. Um, we expanded into Discord, where we, we hit the 300,000 um, member uh, uh, mark just a, about a week ago. Um, so we've had incredible um, signs of uh, uh, just interest from both the uh, fantasy and, and uh, uh, fantasy industry and esports industry um, to connect. And we, we hope that we're setting a gold standard for uh, what what is capable um, in, in the American uh, fantasy scene. So um, I won't ramble on too too long. I think I was told a minute um, for an intro, uh, but we're just so grateful to to join the trade association um, and to strengthen the North American esports industry. Um, and look forward to meeting uh, so many great people around the country. Well, we're we're so glad that Adam, you know, Wexler had the vision um, so long ago. It'll be interesting. We'll come back to you, but you know, I hear often. And I hear this more than you would imagine. Hi, Megan. I'm wondering about the, the trade association because I just got a job representing esports for my company. And I just can't imagine what the first day of that is like. I can't name the brands, but I love those conversations. I just had one yesterday, literally. Um, and it, you know, it's it's so fun you know to to hear those stories so save those and we'll come back to you about about what that's like from the ground up and building a department and and wow 10 people that's that's impressive they're lucky to have you so thanks for joining us roy original og i think founding sponsor um <laughs> you had you were my favorite member when you joined because roy totally got what an association was and that has been, at first, I was like, why don't people know what a trade association is? Like, what's going on? <laughs> and it was so, <laughs> right, you can probably remember, I was just scratching my head, like, why don't people not know this? It's been the one of the other fun conversations I've had, is just sharing something that's worked as old as time. Whether we're in a technological conversation 
um, a Zoom conversation or in a physical space to share ideas, network, and and learn together. So um, it's it's been a lot more fun than I thought <laughs> than those early <laughs> days. Cause, Cause you, I mean, you, you joined, like, we must've been like less than a year old and we were, oh, yeah. our, we, we were the first, your first, it was our first event mm -hmm. and um, go for it. Let's, let's hear what, what you're, what you were seeing in, in all this, Ray. Well, thank you, Megan. Of course you, no, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you, 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 but seriously, no, I think that that, um, I, and I appreciate the intro. You're, you're right. I remember it was random because I, I saw, there was something that popped up somewhere on, uh, I was online looking around and it, it, we were doing something with some esports events that we were working on. And, uh, and this is back when I was uh, at Encore at that time. And, and we were working on a couple things, but I was like, we gotta be an organization that represents this industry. This industry is just too big for there not to be something, right? And I randomly just popped, it just popped up when I was searching for associations. And then when we connected and realized that we had some mutual connections in the association space from your yeah. experience uh, in meeting planning and being an association executive so it just immediately connected um but um you know and i can get into who who i work for now but is i think to your point though that was what drew me in was yeah. just your energy your commitment your passion for this industry and what we were seeing at that time in whatever that was 2018 19 um around that time period i think is when we were starting to see their, their, the 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 esports um, uh, evolution was just happening in real time, and it was growing so fast. And it needed something that was a a, a I don't want to use the term rational, but it was it was a mature, rational voice about the business of this industry. And there need to be, uh, and there was a need for what ESTA brings to the game. Um, so. All that said, um, yeah, but I'm, I'm Roy Benier. I'm the sales director for Smart Source. Uh, we are an AV event production company. We're nationwide, but I work in the Dallas office, which is where our CEO is located. It's our corporate office to some degree. But we also have an office in Hop Hog, uh, New York as well, where it's kind of our financial offices are located. But we have offices across the country. Um, and we are a AV event production group, as well as IT. IT is another big piece of our of our business model. And uh, part of that business model on the IT side is we are also, uh, we work closely with Dell and their Alienware uh, platform and equipment. So a lot of the things that we do, we, we work on that equipment. We also re uh, refurbish it, recondition it, and present it for use out in the gaming space as well. So that's one of the things that we do with, uh, with Dell. But um, you know, our team is covered. We cover everything out there in one way or another, whether it's uh, working with exhibit design agencies, which is booth builders who create immersive environments where we provide the AV for that. But also we do association meetings and events. We do corporate events. Um, we're in a lot of spaces doing work. And we've recently done a couple of bids for some esports tournaments. I can't get into much more than that right now, but just that we've gotten some opportunities in that space. So they're, they're rapidly ramping up. But um, it was an easy pitch for me to take this to our leadership and go, guys, we need to be in this space. I mean, it's not going away. It's going to be around for a while. And of all the organizations that are out there, and, and there are a number, this was the only one that really has, uh, to use the term, meat on the bone. There is depth to this organization. There is a rationale behind why we need to be in it from a business standpoint, because not just to be it's not just about being going after um, business necessarily, but understanding more about the networking that goes on with this industry and how it's working. And so we can develop better ways of going about business to support it when the needs come around. So um, we are excited to be in this uh, group. My colleague who couldn't join us, Maria Boyd, is our other member. She's based in Chicago. I'm based in Dallas, um, but we'll be attending. Our goal is for the August meeting to be there um, for uh, Esports Next, but just thrilled to be back and so glad we were able to get back into the game here with you guys literally and um looking mm -hmm. forward to being a part of where we're going next yeah i i love when people you know because sometimes when people have a i mean let's face it the workforce is different now um you know people don't stay like they used to 
it used to like just get a job and have it forever. Like my grandfather worked <laughs> for the post office. And that yeah, was true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I love seeing sometimes people just have to leave because they are leaving their job or whatever. But I most love, it's just chilling when I see people come back with a different company and they bring their company with them. And um, it's just, it, it, it means a lot. I know this might be personal, but it's like um, who shows up at your party or, you know, like you just never mm -hmm. forget things like that. Like, oh yeah, that friend came that one time at that one event I had, that, you know, because there's just this smashing fear that no one's going to show up to my birthday <laughs> party. I mean, who hasn't had that? Thank God I was born in July. Um, <laughs> 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 well, you know, Megan, to your point, I think that says it, it says a lot about you, but also about the power of associations and yeah. the relationships we build yes. go beyond our business yes. and become more personal in nature. Because I think if anything happened during COVID to reawaken the need for our human connection, yeah. um, COVID did that to us. It really made us believe in an appreciate the power of connection with each other and That's seeing fair. people come together again in face-to-face -face meetings we're seeing it across the industry but there's just something about that side of it like you mentioned just now that personal side that you just can't get in i, I in, a, in any business that wouldn't allow me to be a part of an organization that supports what we do i couldn't do it it would drive me yeah. nuts because i love yeah. this side of it yeah i feel like um working from home I've changed, you know, like I'm here now at this event, but I actually didn't need the breaks I need now. Like, you know, um, it's cool to just like, cause I, it's so much seeing people right. and it feels so good. I don't want to leave, but I have to go take a break, you know, drink some water. This is my lunch. I'm skipping lunch, <laughs> um, but it feels good to just be up here and have a different convert. Zoom is different. It's just different. It's like there's a phone personality. We all have a Zoom personality. And then there's the in-person. So the in-person for me has changed now. I'm much more present to really being with people when I'm with them, you know, mm -hmm. and just totally. truly, just truly enjoying being with people because I spend most of my time, you know, in my office by myself. So when I get out, I also have to like contain my ex excitement and enthusiasm and take breaks. <laughs> I mean, I mean, so it sounds it sounds so somewhat corny, but we have all been affected by COVID, and it's real forever. It's not ever going back. We're at more a digital age now, and um, these in-person events. That was what Wayne Kimmel today said with 76 capital that that is his you know his vision is that we never lose this connection and that we value it more than we ever have and it was very inspiring hearing from such a such a legend today yeah. it's in our dna <laughs> we can't help it <laughs> yeah 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 um so what are some you know, interesting things about each of your company that you would like to share. We, you know, we have a good 10, 15 minutes, um, you know, why prize picks and et cetera. Um, what makes you unique and, you know, or, you know, share about your vision or whatever. There was a lot of talk um, today too. I got some really great sessions about community engagement digitally, you know, how, being in the game you know, beyond the game, yeah. change the way the game is changing. Just love, I love this industry. Uh, who wants to grab that question? Yeah, sure. I can step in. Um, yeah, something that uh, I, I've been in the sports betting and fantasy industry for, for about a decade now, and something that, that I noticed um, when I came on at Prize Picks that stood, stood us apart was the focus on uh, what we call our member support team which is customer service and within the um within the greater sort of gambling sports betting fantasy world there's a a predominantly uh strong push for revenue and um price picks is wanting to become the most beloved 
fantasy platform <clears throat> out there in the industry. Uh, and w w we do that through the, the, w the way that we uh, uh, treat our customers, the community that we build, uh, whether it's on social media <clears throat> and live support um, with providing the, the, the latest scoring feeds or um, services on any platform. We, we really strive to, to make feel people feel as welcome as possible to set us apart from what is a predominantly monetarily focused uh, industry. And I think that um, whether you're, you're, you're spending $5 on entries or you're spending $500 on entries, that you will feel the same level of care. And, and I, having been on the customer side of, of many sports books before, I can say that there's a predominantly large bot uh, uh, integration in, in a lot of these companies. And, and we've always strived to put ourselves differently. Uh, on the esports front, um, we we are, as I mentioned earlier, um, innovating. Um, so we don't outsource any of our esports uh, uh, product creation, uh, lines making, trading, um, everything from the way we think about promotions and social media. We do that all in house without consulting. We bring people who are, I hope, as passionate as everyone on this call, as I imagine, uh, very similarly. Uh, but but that that want to be uh, recognized for uh, creating new uh, experiences around esports, not just uh, another conversion tool. So um, I've definitely felt the um, the executive team's vision of uh, member service, five star treatment uh, through every part, every department, internally and externally, and additionally, it's translated to how we think about creating our esports products. So. Um, all right, I'll, I'll stop there. Maybe, maybe you can get some more info at the FSGA, Megan. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it, one of the other things today was like we can't even imagine. Like we like there's so much in the imagination of what's coming, and that was the other thing. Not to keep quoting Wayne, but he was he Wayne Kimmel did a just a great job today on his panel, and and they were um, they were talking a lot about. We don't, we, we just don't even have, we can't even imagine what, what is coming. Um, you, you know, if, if we go as to something so basic, since we're here on LinkedIn to events and just how they've come along from, you know, multimedia and immersive experiences and technology, simplicity of connecting little, little safe spaces. I was at a touch the grass put your feet in the grass. Um, what was, was it touch grass at DreamHack? Was that two weeks ago? I mean, I loved it. And um, we just walked by this really great cabana, Cope cabana, and there was grass in there. Big, huge bean bags to lay down, charge your phone, water. <laughs> I mean, when we were kids, I remember going through Great America one one day with one shoe because I my flip flop my flip flop fell off the the ride. I mean, I've been this, there, been there before. You know, these, we kids all have. Were, these kids were like under a fan. They were getting their shoulders rubbed. They were getting water, charging their phone. I was like, I had one burnt foot. You know, <laughs> after a day of roller coaster. I mean, burnt because I remember the sidewalk was too hot for my foot. <laughs> so I mean, just the just so much has changed for the better. I I laugh about that. You know, um, you're up in Gurney. How's it? How is it up there? It's not bad. You know, it's, it's I grew up here, so it's good to to come home every once in a while and see the the changes that's happened, which has been a lot in the last ten years. So, but it's good. It's good. But just like, I mean, anything, like with changes like that, like the whole industry itself, the esports industry has changed so much. And, and, and especially in the U.S. compared to the rest of the world, it's like 50 different countries. So it's 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 different everywhere and it's it's changing everywhere and it's it's evolving. And it's it's good to kind of see that firsthand and be a part of it and kind of grow with it and see where other people are fitting where you never thought they would fit in. And it like or it, it slots in and it works out where ways you'd never think that so. It's been exciting to see that and kind of be a part of it and it's it's going to keep going that way and it's positive so i love seeing that um, 
you know, there's a lot, um, there's a lot about inclusivity and I mean, the, yesterday I flew into Cleveland and I was fortunate enough to meet with some members that are here in Cleveland that are launching the Cleveland chapter. Now I would have never thought that would have came right. You know, how, how our chapters um, yeah. Yeah. have launched. That's been, you know, I was never part of a chapter growth initiative and um, boy, you know, I just got right off the plane and met with the Cleveland chapter and, you know, we're talking about when we're going to get together again. And it's right. so cool, you know, to connect this way. I would have never thought. Um, I know the the Bar Association and the Medical Association, they do great jobs with their chapters. Right. I wouldn't have realized how much tourism would have um, partnered up with this industry as it has. I mean, we talked about it in the early days. But, yeah. the, the, wow, you saw that. You have to own that one. Well, I mean, I think that it's, oh, thank you. That's great. And it's exciting to see it. It's one of the things I've noticed since rejoining and getting into that we've set up chapters now and there's no better way for you to really get grassroots involvement than it is yeah. to get to the chapter level because not everybody can attend a big meeting. Not everybody can go to the annual conferences, et cetera. So if you can keep it local, things tend to be the stronger associations because you're getting immediate feedback from your grassroots membership. And you're hearing their needs effectively. You're hearing the changes in the business more directly. So really excited about seeing that with the STA. And, um, you know, it's just been fun to see how the esports industry has continued to evolve, you know, pre-COVID, during COVID, post-COVID. We're now seeing it continue on. And it's overcome all those hurdles. And I remember uh, I was at the Game Developers Conference um, in between, you know, we were all going through our shuffles after COVID. And I'd worked with Informa Tech for um, almost a year prior to come over to Smart Source, and our show was Game Developer Conference. And boy, telling you going going from in the esports association space and hearing the issues there, then going to the game developer side of things and hearing the things they're dealing with, you were I was able to put that bridge together in my head as to okay, one can't really survive without the other. Yeah, they're all in this thing, even though they're in separate channels, all on one mission. You know to make game developing more universal and to all the different issues they're dealing with, but also on the esports side where the product is now being taken and, and being put to test, right? It's being um, stress tested, I guess, in many ways. Yes. But there's no doubt about the passion people have about the space of, of, of gaming, esports specifically, and it's so contagious. It's hard to not give it its just due when you see the impact it's having across all elements of our business, right? I mean, I, I still keep up with the guys in Raleigh and seeing all the things that they're doing in that area and, you know, with esports in their space and everything they're doing in those in areas. And that's not, that can be, that's mirrored across the country in different yeah. CVBs are into it. Destinations understand the importance of hosting these tournaments. Um, the, the industry of hotels and, you know, the, the lodging side of it, seeing the value of it. So I, I, Kudos to you and the entire board for everything you've done to get ESTA to this point to withstand a COVID situation, but also now be in full, full growth mode. And sure. congratulations. It's awesome. We we're just, we're, yeah, we're, it's, it's wonderful. It's, it's a wonderful, um, it's a wonderful industry. And we're, we're really pleased. One of the things that I've really have enjoyed that um, I've never done before is make it to so many industry events. I've almost made it to all of them just once yeah. over the last, yeah. you know, almost decade. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, having the opportunity to to look at a at a the how the industry presents at a 360 degree level has been so cool cuz you know, we keep we don't keep one job. But it's it's cool for me to stay in an industry and to have had this role for as long as I have. And and so much crossover has been nice where I could go to one conference and see both groups. Um, yeah, there's certain there's certain conferences that way. And then wherever I'm at, there's always a chapter party. Um, we were a little late in the game here in Cleveland, but we'll be back. This is a great little city. Um, um, we met with uh, Cle I, I want to say. Cleveland University um, esports coach or um, a lot of the 
a couple different scholastic meetings yesterday. Um, so I'm sure I'll be back. It was a 45 minute flight. Super great. Well, we're coming here on the half hour, closing things up. I know we're all going to be together um, in Chicago. Um, what What are the parting words? What 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 do you have to leave everyone with probably during their lunch hour? Well, I'll just say that um, I, I know the, the fantasy industry and the greater sports betting industry is rather new to the esports front in North America. Um, but we do represent, uh, well, I'm speaking for price picks. Uh, we do represent a, a um, recurring uh, long-term partnership opportunity for what I think will be a lot of the ESTM members. And I, I just want you to know that door is always open, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, email, whatever, and obviously in person at, at, in Chicago, uh, just to have a meet and greet conversation and explore, even if you just want to say long time NFL fantasy football guy and <laughs> curious how you guys come up with lines, you know, stuff like that. So you know, door, door is always open and I look forward to meeting uh, all, all the great colleagues. And, and thank you. I think you're going to have a um, an expert table uh, at the conference. We have a we have a really interesting, we have two really interesting networking opportunities that I love that are our signature, our, our signatures. One is, it's it's a very long or two, depending on how many people, it's, I guess it's two very long tables that are one-on-one -on -one right in front of each other. And it's kind of has the speed dating. Uh, <laughs> <with>. Amazing. <laughs> uh -huh. and, it's, um, and they time it. So I don't remember how long it is. I want to say it's like no more than two minutes. Okay. So really quick. So everybody's going the opposite way in that long table, but at least you kind of know and you're like, okay, I remember you. I'm going to see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I prefer, and, I've never done speed dating, but I prefer that format than Tinder swipe left or right. on. The <laughs> so, no, exactly. Really exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, I think John Davidson and Charles Fenroy created it. Cool. Um, for That's our, a great I know, idea. For, and I would imagine they both have done speed dating and they're good at it. <laughs> so, so I'm putting words in, in, in their mouth for sure. So then when, when you're done with that and then you, now you've met everyone, then we have round tables, um, just banquet style tables that will have signs that have a topic. So then you get to choose. And I think, I think we do like a table rotation of like five or 15 minutes. So then you choose a couple of your specialized organized topics. And Adam, I believe you're an expert speaker at the conference a bit. Um, um, but I can't remember exactly. But that that's a new thing that um that we're the new the new signature is the we we won't move away from this expert round table. It's it's been a great hit. Great. Um so so it's, you know, then it's a little more strategic. Um all right, parting parting words, Mr. Benier. Oh, gee, um, I'd say probably just uh, one thing that going back to something I mentioned earlier about uh, how we've all come out of uh, other situations um, from our past, but it's just always good to be in the moment and always remember that. Important to be in the moment, savor every moment you can because boy, they get fewer and fewer as every year goes by. So you better grab onto the ones you got. <laughs> Enjoy it. That's so fast, doesn't it? Oh, Jesus, ridiculous. <laughs> it's like faster than we want to know about. Let's just put it that way. It does. It goes fast. <laughs> I think that's a sign that that's fun though, because it went slow for me in school when I was younger. Yeah, so did that time between one Christmas and the next. Seem like it just <laughs> would take you longer than twelve months. I don't know why. That's true. <laughs> when you were little, right? It was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. So it's a good sign, I guess. But yeah, it sure does. And that's a great, that's great with you, Roy, for sure. Being coming from a hospitality and an event background, you know, enjoy every moment. And you do, that's for sure. I try. <laughs> yes, for sure. For sure. And Jake, some parting wisdom for our our folks that are joining us during their lunch hour. So dedicated. Yeah, like kind of like Adam said, touching on it, um, like the crossover between fantasy sports and sports betting and, and then the esports as well. It's 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 very fresh now and it's it's exciting because I think there really is a good there there's a lot of good partnerships that could happen there. So I'm excited for that. 
Um, I'm excited for the show to meet everyone and, and meet all you guys in person um, and love to connect with everyone. So I'm, I'm excited to meet everyone and, and say hi. So, Well, thank you guys all for joining us for this member LinkedIn Live. And I look forward to welcoming you to Sweet Home Chicago and being our, our guest and enjoying our incredible city. And that's all for now. I'm Megan Van Patten. Please feel free to reach out. If you'd like to reach out to any of our guests, Jake Nori, Roy Benier, and Adam Booth. Everybody have a great afternoon. Take care.